Okay, it's a pleasure to have Ivu, and he's going to be talking about topological stars. Okay, thanks uh, for inviting me to talk here in this in this really nice meeting. Um, so the title "Topological Star" is uh, sort of stolen in one of Nick's papers, the Hammer paper, "Philosophizing with the Hammer." Uh, but I hope by the end of the talk, it will make sense why it's good to use. So the work that I will, so I'll present some ongoing work with Pierre Heidemann, who is a postdoc uh, at Hopkins. Um, some has appeared and more is to come. So first to set the stage, I will start by just saying some st stuff that all of you guys know, uh, which is that black holes now, at least in the last five years, have moved from being to the um, abstract uh, uh, rare objects out there, which we think about in theoretical physics quite a bit. However, we found that in the last five years, they're actually real, not just real, there seem to be very generic objects that, that are out there in, 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 in nature. And um, one thing that is starting to sort of become clear when you talk to experimentalists from LIGO, or even theorists who interact with experimentalists more directly, is that within two to three decades, um, the resolution of current experiments are going to be good enough that they will be able to see more detailed structure of whatever ultra compact objects that are sitting there that could be a, that, that, that looks like a black hole uh, uh, from GR. We will be able to measure things like quasi-normal modes, several first quasi-normal modes, probably in a decade and a half or so. So this is, in my opinion, incredibly exciting. And it sort of moved our field from being a extreme theoretical work to something that could be plausibly studied in, in, in nature out there. So in my, from my perspective, you can ask now a very meaningful physics question, which is that are there qu coherent quantum gravity states that can be floating in the sky, which we can ultimately see. But of course, when you think about quantum gravity states, we should think about microstate geometries, which for which all of you guys are, are, are extreme experts. So from my point of view, I think this is a call to arms for all string theorists that we should think about what object can we make that we could potentially see and what they should look like in the sky. Sorry, Ibu, your slide right. doesn't change. You oh. still the first slide. Is it still? Yeah. I think that's because yes, you are using Zoom and you are sharing only the Zoom screen. The solution is to use Zoom, uh, is to use Keynote and then go to, uh, share the full screen and make the talk to be full screen. If you are just sharing the Keynote screen, yeah. it's is not it moving. Better? It's not moving. Okay. Stop the screen share and you should share or share something else and you should share your full screen. Yep. So now, we, uh, because now you are just, just sharing the um, keynote. Okay. So okay. you should just go to share the full screen. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Actually, hit play. It should work. Go, go for no, it. it. That shouldn't happen. Okay. Now we're seeing the presenter view. Okay. Well, that's not what you want to show us. Okay. So what do you see now? We're seeing two slides, one of which is uh, blank and the other of which is a call to arms. We're, we're seeing the presenter view. Okay, so let me try this one more time and then we... I think if you just share the full screen. Yeah, share yeah, the screen. I just stop sharing and then share the full screen. Okay. No, that's it. No, if you go full screen. Hit play. That works. And you're good. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. So, 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 I was at this point. So, from from my perspective, there is a sort of call to arms for string theorists to really start to think about: Can we make uh, reasonably things that could be floating out there, and what they should look like from the point of view of various observations? It's also important to point out: While LIGO has been successful and EHT has been successful. This has sort of galvanized a huge, huge community of uh, people, of experimenters and observationists to really try to think about how to observe black holes. So this two to three decades sort of timeline, this is just with the current trends of where LIGO is, there might be even new and more interesting ways for people to, to, to probe um, ultra compact objects that look like black holes. So, so I think it's really sort of 
the time for many of us to start to take these things more seriously and to really think about what we could tell people of what they might, might see. So to this end, we thought of, uh, I think there is a bottom-up picture that is needed for, in the point of view of the microstate geometry. We should understand what spherically symmetric, shortchild like simple metric should look like um, in order to be able to say something that other people would, would, would probably listen and, 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 and try to look for. So this is my sort of motivation. I want to sort of understand what spherically symmetric, shortchild like black uh, microstates could look like. And of course, I want to sort of move away, move very far away from anything supersymmetric or extremal and, 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 and such. Uh, another motivation, which is more a sort of a philosophical uh, motivation and it's more personal, of course, usually important ideas in physics have something we call the spherical cow model, which is a simple model, which allows you to sort of understand the interesting and important physical question that you should ask about. And fairly, uh, there isn't a sort of spherical cow model for microstate geometries from which you can uh, do several back of the envelope calculations and try to understand what could happen and what cannot happen. So this is a sort of more philosophical and a personal uh, sort of motivation of, of why to look for the things that I want to look for. So with that, let's to just jump in. So when we talk about microstate geometries, what we want is we want to replace the, 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 the structure around the horizon and beha beyond the, behind the horizon to the singular point to something that is, let's say, smooth geometry. And these two smooth geometry are going to be characterized by topology. But this, this fact, of course, we know exactly what it means in context of string theory. In context of string theory, we know that we can study D brain bound states. And there is this wonderful thing that happened, which is geometric transition, where a strongly coupled brain system can transition to something which, which is described by interesting topology within the framework of geometry. And this, of course, underlies the mechanism of microstate uh, geometries. So we want to start with broad lessons of that we learn from this, from geometric transition and microstate geometry and see how far we can push those broad lessons on their own. So one thing that's true is if we want to have interesting topology that can replace a black hole, you need to have some shrinking spaces uh, in order to do that. That's just a generic geometric fact, which is independent from string theory. Interesting topology requires uh, compact directions to shrink in some interesting way. Um, Another thing we know that we want from a string theory, if you want these interesting topologies to be, to, 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 to be stable in some way and, and to, to be able to sit there, we usually need to wrap some flux on it to, in order to keep it stable. So from these sort of broad statements of lessons, what that suggests is if microstate geometries are generic and, 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 and are around, maybe I should look for the simplest theory which admits both of these things, which would be Einstein Maxwell theory in 5D, which can give you something that looks like microstate geometry in four dimensions. So continuing with this sort of ultra reductionist simple view on, the, on things, you, we want to start with Einstein Maxwell theory and we want to consider a very simple answer, right? So we have something which is spherically symmetric. It's uh, there is a radial direction we add just an S1, a circle, and we have the standard time direction, and we turn on some magnetic field, which wraps the sphere. And this can provide some support for whatever object we have. And we have a fixed periodicity for the circle. So the, the circle has period Ry. And the expectation, of course, is that if you're doing a compactification, the, the periodicity of Ry is something that is fixed asymptotically. It's an asymptotic data. It's not part of the data that labels whatever object that you're thinking about. So Ry is an independent parameter. So if we look at this, this, this metric, this ansatz, it has a sort of nice wick rotation symmetry, meaning I can switch the time direction and the circle direction. Uh, and the ansatz is fixed. So this is a sort of a useful perspective to have because it allows you to, you can sort of impose this sort of rotation symmetry onto your system in when you're trying to solve and look for solutions. Uh, and this has been quite useful in this context. 
So what solutions can you get? So it, it turns out if you just take that system with that flux, you can just show straightforwardly that you solve Einstein's equation where you have FS looks like a Schwarzschild um, coefficient and FB also looks like something that is a, a, a Schwarzschild. So there are interesting limits to consider here, which is the vacuum limits. So this solves Einstein's Maxwell equation where the magnetic field is fixed to be the specific quantity here. Now, there are interesting limits to consider. First, you could set, for example, RB to zero. So the magnetic field is gone. And when you do that, you just get a short shield solution times an S1. And that's a solution we, we, we know exists and we know how to think about quite well. So it is sort of the simplest thing you could write. When you turn, on, turn off RS to zero, then the time direction goes, and then you have a Euclidean short shield, which is just obtained by recrotating the short shield solution times time. So this solution, of course, is known and is be, it's been used in the past uh, by Mature, for example, as sort of motivating uh, microstates. But of course, we know that solution is, is unstable, but it sort of captures um, some aspects of the physics. Um, so, so here we have basically a one fram parameter family generalization of this, this sort of basic setup. Another way to think of this sort of a solution, it exactly corresponds to taking the Euclidean short shield and the short shield and superpose them at the same point in 5T, right? So you superpose the, the Euclidean short shield and the standard 4D short shield in 5D. Um, that's also another way you can think of it. And when you do this sort of superposition in order to support that system, you need to turn on a magnetic field to, to, for it to, to be able to sit there. So the solution, of course, is quite simple, but which means that it's likely it appeared in the literature before, and indeed it has. There are two papers, one by Miyamoto and Kuda and another by Stoin and, Ma, and, and Mann, where they sort of wrote these metrics down. In the first one, it was in the context of studying stability of black strings. And in the second one, they actually tried to interpret this solution as being a bubble uh, geometry, uh, but they not in the same context that we will think about it here. Okay. So what so there are there are three sort of regimes to consider in this in this simple solution. When you have RB is greater than RS, then the circle will shrink first. And then you have a smooth uh, bubble that caps off at RB, a smooth geometry that caps off at RB and it is completely geodesically complete. And that is what we call the bubble geometry. And we refer to that as the topological star. When RB is less than RS, you have a black string solution where you have a horizon sitting at RS and something else interesting is happening behind the horizon. And when RB is equal to RS, then you just have an extremal black string uh, uh, that's, 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 that's sitting there. So of course you want to know what this looks like in four dimensions. You can Kaluza Klein reduce along the circle in 4D and then you get a solution of Einstein Maxwell Dilaton uh, which we can write, it looks spherically symmetric, it looks short shield like And uh, this 4D solution, if you, if you study it, the, because the, the dilaton has a stress tensor which will blow up uh, uh, at, at the horizon of, 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 of the solution. So it is horribly singular in four dimensions. It just means that you have additional uh, uh, degrees of freedom or additional states, which is not captured by the 4D theory. And you have to go to 5D to continue studying and understanding the geometry. And this is a sort of a physics we expect to be the case when you have a, a microstate that part of having a microstate is being able to describe additional degrees of freedom, which are not captured by the standard 4D, uh, Maxwell, 4D Einstein theory with whatever fields that you want to add uh, around. So you can straightforwardly compute the conserved quantities, which are which is the mass, which is given in units of m Planck, is just given by Rf and Rb, and also the charge. So so there so we can get these detailed uh, th things out. So this is just to lay out what we want, how what the solution is, and 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 how it behaves. So in four dimensions, you always see a massive central object, with, which is spherically symmetric with this mass, 
and then it can also have some charge given, given, given here. So now we want to study, understand the regularity of, let's say, the bubble solution of the topological, topological star to see how much it makes sense and how well it can capture aspects of microstate geometry. So we can zoom in near the bubble region. Um, and of course, as you might expect, you have just a, 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 an R1 line, which corresponds to time, and then you have some four dimensional space. So this 4D space becomes some R2 plane times the sphere, which is the bubble. So now uh, here to make this R2 plane, uh, this, this coefficient here, since the radius of the circle is fixed uh, by, by some physics out there, um, in order to, 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 to make this, this move, we can, uh, we, this allows us to fix basically one of the parameters, let's say RS over here, in terms of RB and the radius of the circle. And we also add K, which is a topological parameter, which is a, a, a orbifold parameter uh, uh, for our system. Now, when K is one, the space is completely smooth and there is no orbifold singularity. However, you immediately see uh, a sort of something that could be a, a a stop to this whole game, which is that you see that the radius of the bubble has to be smaller than the radius of the of the extra dimension. So this is uh, at face value. This is this is this is this, this looks bad because if we want four dimensional physics, we expect that the radius of of or the inverse radius of the extra circle to be much much small, much much larger than any scales that we might observe, right? So what this would tell you then is, is, is that these objects would be very, very small and cannot possibly describe anything macroscopic that we might care about. So however, if you look at this regularity constraint, it tells you that if you want to have large bubbles, which might be, let's say, astrophysically relevant, then somehow you have to be able to crank up this orbifold parameter and also you have to be able to make sense of it in some way, right? And, and this is what we will do next. So if we consider this orbifold parameter, you look at the metric, the, this four dimensional metric near the bubble, um, you, can, you can rewrite this metric as being some S1 that is fibered on some 3D base, right? So you have some 3D base, which is given by rho, theta and chi. And then you can consider some S1, which is fibered on this 3D base. And, and, and this, this vibration is uh, the, the, the first churn class of this vibration is fixed by K, the orbifold parameter here. There is a bit more detail to study. So in, if you now do this transformation and you go to this picture of, 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 the, of this metric where you have an S1 over an R3 base, what you, what you do is that you sort of push the orbifolds into two points. One is at the north pole of the bubble and the other orbifold is at the south pole at the bubble, of the bubble. Now, when you zoom in to each one of these orbifold points uh, that you have, you find that the near metric is going to be given by, by a Gibbons Hawking space, which is an orbifold, an R4 mod ZK. So, so this space, each one of them near this point, the, the space time looks like an R4 mod ZK. And in this point, the space time looks like R4 mod ZK. So, so globally, if you look at this global geometry, what this means is that at the North Pole, you have a monopole of charge K. And at the South Pole, you have a monopole of charge minus K. The, the minus sign is just due to the orientation flip between the North and the South Pole. So, this thing is nice. So what this means then, when we go to this sort of resolution, we push these orbifold singularities at the poles and locally we have some version of supersymmetry that's, that's appearing there, which is, the, which is giving me this Gibbons, Gibbons Hawking, Hawking space. <clears throat> but once you have a Gibbons Hawking space, I think you win. You win because we know how to treat those space times. Locally, what it means is that the, the, the bubble, the, the singularities that are at the North and the South Pole can be resolved and they can be resolved into K centers. 
Okay, so you would get then at the North Pole, K minus one smaller bubbles. And at the South Pole, you would get also another set of K minus one smaller bubbles. And K here is going to be, has to be larger than the size of the sphere symmetric bubble compared to, 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 to the radius of the extra dimension. So you see that you, you've managed to sort of decouple the size of the, of the, of the topological star compared to the size of the extra dimension, which, which should appear from just general uh, uh, dimensional analysis. So, they, so, so how should we think about this then? So the, the upshot of how we think about this is the following, is that the simple spherically symmetric solution that we construct should, should, shouldn't actually be thought of as, as an isolation. It should be thought of as a single state in a larger ensemble of multi-bubble microstates, okay? So, so if, if I use the standard example of Nick, that, that we should think of microstate as being the thermodynamic of, let's say, the air in the room, this is a state, for example, where you're running against the, the in one direction of the room, so all the air is moving in one, in one direction towards you, so you look like in a, you are in a unique state, but if you observe more details, you see that there are additional degrees of freedom by which particles can move, which hints at a much larger microstate that you see. So this is a sort of first bottom-up picture you could have where you can see that microstate geometries are, some, can't, are, are, are somewhat generic and should be thought of as generic thing that can occur in, 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 in theories of, 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 of gravity. But of course, if I have this single sort of uh, state, this most symmetric state, I'm completely allowed to take the bubbles that are at the poles and turn on magnetic field on them and then grow them. So when you do, then the generic state within the system should be a, a, a state where you have 2K uh, small bubbles of the order, of the, of the side order, uh, the radius of, 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 of the, 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 the extra dimension, okay? So now, once you're allowed to turn on, to, to allow to have this orbifold and, and, and allow the orbifold parameter K to be large, you can now make very, very big, big object, which, look, which can be astrophysically big, but then it, it clearly hints at that if you want to describe something big, you need many, many degrees of freedom. And the way those degrees of freedom are being represented here is precisely coming from by having a large number of these smaller bubbles that can be grown to various sizes. Okay. So any questions so far? Ibu? Yes. Do, do you have a, an entropic or a dynamic argument for why you should have multi-bubble microstates? I, I, so immediately, I, I don't. Here, the argument of having this multi-bubble microstate is just if you want something big, right? If you want something big, it should have many degrees of freedom. That's, that's the conclusion that, that, that we can have here. But we, you, we don't have any other specific sort of argument for this. The argument that you would want to say is that if you were to look like look at the, a black hole that would correspond to such a thing, so that black hole would be large. And from standard thermodynamic argument, you would say that you need many states. But, but here we're seeing that you, many states should be there if you want to describe something big from a sort of bottom up. Thanks. So, 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 okay, so that's one limit. I want to make something big, then immediately the geometry tells me that I must have many, many bubbles in order to construct that. And it also shows me how I should proceed to trying to construct these things. So a next thing that, 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 that to, to observe here, which, 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 which is something that it seems have not been discussed much in the microstate uh, uh, um, in the microstate community, which is that if we look at these math formulas, since we have this, 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 the uh, small bubbles for k equal to one, right? You can look at the mass of a small bubble for k equal to one. The mass is going to scale as the radius of the extra dimension over L Planck times M Planck. So the radius of the extra dimensions experimentally out there are the, the Kaluza-Klein scale is sort of bounded to be 
uh, greater, let's say, than 10 TeV. That is the best, I think. That is the sort of most uh, optimistic of how large an extra dimension could be is about 10 TeV. But then we know that an extra dimension, so we can make it small and, you can, and we can allow it to go all the way up close to the string scale. We don't want it to be smaller than the string scale because if it's smaller than the string scale, we know that in, in a non-supersymmetric case, there are instabilities that we would have to worry about. So, so we want to have quote unquote large extra dimension, which just means that you want to have extra dimensions larger than the string scale. So that still leaves you with a huge room where you can have a sort of these solitonic object sitting there that, that, that's floating around. For example, if we make, uh, uh, um, if we make the, the size of the extra dimension to be a little bit above the string scale, which is 100 times the L Planck, the, uh, uh, about 100 L Planck, then you can make a very compact particle-like objects which have a mass about 100 M Planck. So these are going to be objects that are very, very massive. And compared to, for example, the mass of the proton, which is about uh, the M Planck is 10 to the 18 times the mass of the proton. So you can make massive particle-like object just by thinking about microstate uh, uh, geometries, thinking about small microstate geometry. Of course, it is a very interesting question to, to ask this because we know that there is dark matter which exists out there and there's many other sort of uh, things that we expect which do not interact in the standard uh, 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 standard model uh, 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 physics. So it's sort of a curious that just by, by doing this, this sort of um, um, bottom up thinking about microstates, this such a possibility exists. And then you have then object which could be as small as this, and then it could be as big as you want once you allow for these orbital fixed points to, to, to exist. Okay. So, um, so first that was a discussion about the microstate, uh, the, the bubble phase, uh, any questions? So now I'll move on to talk a little bit about what's happening in the black string before we proceed. Okay. So in the black string phase, right? So this is a case when RB is less than RS. So you have a horizon. So you can, the best thing to do is just draw the, the Penrose diagram for this guy. So what, what, what happens in this case is, is that beyond the horizon, you have a bubble that's sitting at, at, in, in some region, which provides a natural end of space, and you actually never reach the, 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 the singularity uh, of, of the usual singularity that you would expect. However, in the region behind the horizon near this bubble, what you observe, the metric near this bubble, instead of being an R2, is actually is, is R11, and more specifically, it is the metric near this region can be described by a Milne space, which is just the, the, the Milne space is just the two cones of, a, of, of, of Minkowski that are glued together, the, the top cone and the bottom cone of Minkowski glued, glued together. So, so Milne spaces are interesting for various reasons. One, Milne spaces are, are, are very singular in, 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 in string theory. And part of that is because if you have a string or anything which have a non-trivial Kuhlsa-Klein angular momentum, probing this origin of the Milne singularity, it would actually see a very, very singular space. However, from the point of view of 4D physics, let's say here, if you're in the 4D physics, all of your excitations are well below the Kaluza-Klein scale. And, and, and objects that are well below the Kaluza-Klein scale in Milne space, when it appears, when it approaches such a singularity, it sort of transitions to another chamber of actually Milne space in a rather smooth way without any, any issues. So if we think about the black string geometry, first, we don't see a singularity behind the horizon. We see a bubble at, at, in, in finite time. And, and on this bubble, the region near this bubble can be described by a Milne space. And from the point of view of, of external excitations, which are well below the Kaluza-Klein scale, what this thing should look like, it should look like a wormhole. 
right? Because this, this region would, would identify with another region of a different chamber of a space, and it should be sort of as, 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 as a wormhole. And hopefully at some point we will have more to say about such a construction. And this would be a wormhole that is stable well below the Calusa Klein scale, but then gets destroyed as you approach the Calusa Klein scale. <clears throat> okay, so the so 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 we have the the topological stars. We have the black string. Um, you can sort of try to say something about uh, uh, the phase space of 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 asymptotic objects one would one would see. So asymptotically in four dimensions. Um, you, you would see an object with some given mass M and some given charge, and there could be several things that they could look like. So here, we, we, we basically plot what you see. So we plot mass versus charge. So if I do the reverse, where I want to think about this, where I fix my asymptotic mass and charge, uh, uh, what are the possible things that I can construct? So if the mass is small enough, there aren't any solutions that are regular and well-behaved. If I increase the, the, the mass to some level, there is a transition point where in this chamber, I have two different types of, of these topological stars with different sizes for the same mass. I have two, for the same mass and charge, I have two different solutions of, of topological stars of different sizes. If I increase, the 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 the, um, the 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 mass even more then I cross so if I increase the mass even more I cross this line and this is a line where one of the topological stars looks like transitions to the extremal black string and that extremal black string if I increase the mass more becomes this black string the non-extremal black string geometry, and then the other sort of topological star survives. And then if I continue further from the asymptotic observer who just have two parameters, M and Q, um, there, then the, the, the mass and the charge also allows for there to be a four-dimensional uh, Rajan Nordstrom black hole. It is important to remember that actually the four dimensional Rajan Nordstrom black hole is not a solution of the 5D Einstein Maxwell theory itself, right? But from a 4D perspective, if, you, if I just fix the mass and the charge, then I can construct a 4D Einstein solution of 4D Einstein Maxwell, which is, which is that of a, of a resonant Nordstrom black hole. So we have it here as a sort of comparative object. To, to think about. So there is a, depending on the mass and the charge, there is a non-trivial phase space where you find different, where different sort of objects can exist from an asymptotic observer. It is sort of interesting that if you, if the mass is small enough, you are in a phase where there, there cannot be any black holes. So these look like um, more of a soliton object than actual uh, would correspond to some, to some black hole itself. Right. And then, of course, we know in string theory, you can have states which are not black holes, but have large mass and, 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 and charges. So, so they're not totally out of the, shouldn't be throw away, should not be thrown away immediately. So what other generalization can we do along this line? First, we can, it turns out, you can just change the two sphere here to some any d dimensional D minus two dimensional sphere, and you can construct <coughs> higher D versions of, of these solutions. Uh, you could also, to do this, to construct the higher D versions, you're, you're, you're also allowed to turn on an electric field. So in the case of the, of the 5D solution, you have a black string, so you can electrically charge the black string in addition to a magnetic field. So you can actually turn on an electric field and a magnetic field in both cases, um, and you, you find that you can construct an explicit solution, which looks like a weak rotated version of the short shield solutions in high D. And then the charges and the magnetic field are fixed in terms of the parameters. So you can find an explicit solution that, that looks like this. So when, when you're, once you go into this sort of a picture of these geometries, you actually can find a type 2B uplift of this solution. So this is our standard solution in 4, 5D. 
you can add a, a circle with some magnetic, which is twisted over the sphere with some twist parameter P. Uh, and then you can just add some T4 that goes with it. You can find, you can see that this, sol this is a solution. Uh, so you also turn on the C2 potential in type 2B and you find that this is a solution where the charges are related to RS and RB in a very specific way. So we can find an uplift of this in directly to, to string theory. So we can try to also study uh, what are the sort of microscopic degrees of freedom that actually gives you this, this, this solution. In, 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 if we, for example, uh, let our S to be greater than RB, right? This would be the, the black string phase. Then, then this, 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 the solution is actually known is just a symmetric Hume black hole solution that's been known for some time. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, so, so far I've just sort of gave you a bottom up picture of how one might construct these microstate geometries and how one could, could think about them. So you could ask, is this just incredibly too simplistic or actually is there more to this, to this story? So first we know that we should be able to take our small bubble and grow them by turning on magnetic fields. We expect those solutions to exist. So we should consider within just Einstein Maxwell theory, a much more general ANSAT where we have some magnetic field, uh, some, 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 some connection that's turned on for the circle Y and also some angular momentum that's turned on for, for, for A. So this should be the most general thing we should consider. So there are various comments we can make here. Um, you can also write down the ANSATS for the flux, which is going to sit in M theory in, 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 in a standard way. In general, of course, the reason why we sort of stay away from this and also why we like supersymmetry so much is because Einstein's equations at this point are incredibly nonlinear and then you might worry that it's, it's, it's a sort of fool's errand that you shouldn't do this. Uh, however, from just the analysis that we just did, we know that we expect to at least get some non-trivial solution where you have more interesting choices of AY to describe the multi-bubble system, which for which we just studied in the, in the previous transparency. But then if there, there could exist solution with non-trivial AY, then by simple weak rotation from this metric, we should also expect solution where there is a non-trivial AT, right? So we expect these things to be there. So there is some glimmer of hope. So, so we try the next best thing, even before we turn on to the angular momenta, we consider still a sort of static and parity invariant ANSATS, but we break the spherical symmetry and make it actually symmetric. And then we turn on the, the some magnetic field and we can also allow some electric field. And then we just plug it into Einstein's equation and, and, and pray to microstate gods that something will work out. And indeed, when you do this, you find that you can solve the system in terms of two, uh, two, 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 two functions, which satisfy a Laplace's equation in the, in the, in, on some, in, in the 3D actually symmetric base. And um, the, the, the metric is given in terms of this W zip naught and, and some function W. So W naught satisfy Laplace's equation. There is a second function K, which appears in the system and this function K has its derivative satisfy Laplace's equation. Then you can find that there is a solution to Einstein's equation you, you can solve the Maxwell's equation. Let's start by that. You solve the Maxwell's equation by setting the, the magnetic field H to be just the, 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 the axial derivative of this function K. And then W squared becomes some arbitrary function G times this combination, this thing here, which, is, which solves Laplace's equation. Then you can uh, plug it back into the Einstein equation, which are nonlinear. Then you find that there is a very much highly non perturbative set of solutions you can find where you have, for example, you, you find two solutions. One is this G is cinch of, 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 some, of, of X. And notice that X here would be this function, which is itself 
a, a, a harmonic function. We also find a second solution, which is a cosine. Um, the point is that these solutions are, are obtained in this way where we take the parameters A and B to be real. But in general, from the point of view of the equations, you can take A and B to be also imaginary, which also suggests there are Euclidean solutions that exist within, within, within this family. Um, but we will not discuss much of that. So it was rather incredibly surprising for us that, that, that even though we have these highly nonlinear Einstein equation, we can find fairly non-perturbative solutions because as you can see, G here is a cinch, which is, which is a sum of exponentials. However, the system is still governed by some linearity structure, which is given by these functions W0 and, 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 and K. So with this, what can you make uh, with these general solutions? So with this general solution, because it's actually symmetric, you can actually construct multi-bubble solutions, which where you just take these short shield bubbles that we described in the previous transparency, and then you can just tack them up along, along, along the axis in this way. And to support these multi-short shield bubbles, you, you, you are actually forced to add struts in the middle. So struts are just things where you have a conical excess. So, so struts physically are objects which have negative tension. And the role of the struts here, which have negative tension, is to exactly provide your stability of these two bubbles. And the way we should think about it in this sort of in extreme uh, uh, um, uh, probe sorry, in this sort of extreme non-quantum limit is that the presence of these struts, they're there to provide you the binding energy that you need to, to basically stack up these, these, these various bubbles. So it was rather surprising that you can find such a structure where you can have this linear structure of bubbles that you can stack on, on, on top of them, okay? We can also find a, a type to be uplift for, for this, for this other more general uh, 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 solution. You could also do something else which is cute, which is that you can add a second Y circle here and look at a 6D system instead of just a 5D system. And when you do that, you still get the same sort of integrable structure where now instead of having a single type of bubble, you can have a speciation of bubbles. You can have a bubble associated to one circle and another bubble associated to another circle. So you can have an even larger family of constructions that you can make in, 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 this, in, this, in these stories. And all of these things exist in, in, in non-BPS, uh, non-extremal regimes. So, so, so now that we can sort of... May I ask a question? Oh, please, go ahead. May I ask a question? The go function ahead. new that appears in uh, the special part... Uh, please repeat the question. Yeah, uh, uh, the previous transparency where there is this function new that appears in the d rho square dz square part. Yes. Oh, this is explicitly known and we can write it in terms of the other functions. Okay. So, so it's not, I didn't write it because it's just a necessary detail, but we can, whenever I give you a solution of W, and whenever I give you a solution uh, here, so here, basically, I have these two Laplace equation. Mm -hmm. Whenever I give you a solution for K and W naught, I can immediately construct each of the two new. Thanks. So we can write explicit solutions even in, this, in, this, in these constructions. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, the, the interesting part wasn't that. The interesting part here, I think, is the fact that this is integrable, right? That you can integrate Einstein's equations explicitly here and get something that, that has this linear structure. Okay, so I will I have one more minute, so I'll just close. So, so, so our goal was to just sort of see whether it at all makes sense to have a bottom-up thinking about microstates, right? So if I didn't know string theory or I didn't know any of any any such a UV completion of quantum gravity, could I have come up with the notion of microstate geometry and write something that makes sense? And 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 this was a sort of a goal by just taking some ideas. Of, of geometry, which is collapsing 
extra dimensions gives you interesting topology and topology supported by flux, which are generic statements about how ge geometries are constructed. Um, um, we're able to come up with nice, interesting examples, which very far away look like spherically symmetric objects um, um, that, that, that look like black holes. And these things are also very, very, very compact, right? I did not discuss their relative sizes, but for example, the, the spherically symmetric bubble, we can see that it cannot be bigger, bigger than twice the size of the associated black hole that it could be. But then once you start to try to put multi-bubble systems, we expect the size to actually shrink to get closer to the would-be horizon size. So these things are very, very compact and they, they're very, uh, and, and, and can mimic quite well black holes as we see them uh, uh, in the sky. So there are various interesting questions you can ask because we have an explicit, rather simple metric. You can study geodesics, you can study orbits, you can study light rings, you can study gravitational waves, which is some of these questions that we want to, to, to study. For example, there is this rather cute thing that we immediately see about the light ring, that if you, if you look at these solutions, the light ring for this solution is actually right on the bubble itself, right? The light ring is right on the bubble itself. Um, and if you were to, for example, compare it to, let's say, a short shield black hole of the same, same mass, the short shield black hole of the same mass would have its light ring to be like three times its, uh, its, 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 its radius. So, so this thing would be itself bigger than the short shield horizon, but it would have a drastic change of where the light ring is. So this is a sort of physical ideas that we want to extract from this thing. So one sort of thing that we might expect just by thinking about uh, uh, microstate geometries is one distinctive feature is that the light ring of microstate geometries should sit at a place that is very different from where a black hole light ring might be. So we, we can study deviations from standard black holes. We want to understand how to construct the spitting bubble in general. So given that we're able to solve some class, so the, 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 the static solution completely, it might be interesting that we could solve the spinning bubble in general. And also if we want this to be more physically plausible, we need to think about possible mechanisms by which a these objects can be generated, right? So this is a sort of very interesting question in microstate geometry, which is how can, let's say a collapse uh, of, of, of a star or some, some, some collapse of matter generate things like, that, that look like microstate geometry? How can maybe bubble nucleation in early universe generate very small bubbles that look like, uh, uh, that can mimic uh, also microstate, microstate geometry? So I'll, I'll, I'll stop here and I'll take questions. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ibrahim. That was great. Any uh, questions or comments or so forth? This is Samir. I have a question. Please. Yeah. So uh, the model you showed where you have the struts, mm -hmm. uh, so they had a conical excess. Yes. And you did say that you could lift that up to 2B. Yes. So does the 2B in that situation have singularities which are valid singularities in string theory? So we haven't- well, they can we be haven't, resolved? Yeah, good, good. So we, so we haven't studied what these singularities should look like really in, 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 in string theory. This is, this is a question that we will try to address next. But, but having objects of negative tension shouldn't be super scary in string theory, since we're already in an extreme non-supersymmetric regime, we know we have orientifold objects which can exist, which have objects of negative tension. So I'm not super afraid of it, but I think it's a question that has to be studied more precisely. Yeah. Uh, just to comment on that, I mean, this looks a little bit like a solution. I think it was Costa and Perry had a, a long time ago. I, it's not maybe the same, but it's very similar. It's Good. basically a string of black holes supported by, between them by struts. And those struts were, are not all interfolds. There's something pretty horrible, but, but okay. How is this related to Costa and Perry and the, those old story, that old story? So there is, a, there is some rather uh, differences here. So, so, so in Costa and Perry, what they actually look like is they looked at a 5D calusocline object where, where the connection for the extra circle corresponded to some angular momentum in time. 
and then they're and then they're they're able to sort of solve 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 that problem and then try to construct uh, these these solutions uh, in this way. So here we're looking at with the construction that we have is is by explicitly a magnetic field, and I don't know how Costa and Perry themselves uplifted this construction type to be. I would have to go back and look. But if you go back in the literature, actually, I don't think Costa and Perry were the first to do that. We, there is just some really old papers that seem to do something similar. So solutions like that have been floating in the literature for, for, for a while. But I don't, I'm not sure that there is any serious understanding of how to think about these struts from some more UV complete theory. Okay, maybe uh, one, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Samit. Okay, so I was just wondering in the uh, general bubbles you showed where you had bubbles on tops of spheres and so on, you blew up the RB4 singularities and you were putting fluxes to stabilize those bubbles, especially the big one. Yeah. So is it possible to put fluxes on different bubbles so that overall the entire solution has no net charge, magnetic or otherwise? Oh, very good, very good. So, so this, is, this is a question that I, so this is something that I really want to do. And I... And, and honestly, I cannot do it yet, right? So this is something we want to do, but we cannot do it yet because until, so, so this picture where we have this small bubble, you should see it as a sort of probe limit of that extreme picture, okay? So, so once we have a, a complete back reactive picture that allows us to blow up these bubbles, this is the first question we want to address. And, and, and it, it, it could be plausible to do it, and here's the reason why I think it could be plausible to do it is because the bubbles that sit in the North Pole and the one that sit in the South Pole have opposite orientation. Because they have opposite orientation, I can imagine putting different charges of different signs and then the asymptotic charge can sum up to zero. In fact, the motivation of doing this multi-bubble stack that, that an important motivation to doing this multi-bubble stack that I showed uh, uh, later there, we wanted to know whether we could, since we can have a solution of a bubble which has some magnetic field, could we stack them in a way that the magnetic field all sum up to zero, right? However, it turns out in that case, what happens when you try to do that is that so far, we, so far when, we, when, when, when we study that, come here, what happens is, is that the way you construct this multi-bubble is that you look at this, this, this functions W, is there a log that satisfies Laplacian? So you can put a source on this, which would either, let's say, shrink the circle or give you something that looks like a horizon, right? But let's say I shrink this circle, but then I want to keep this guy finite. Then I have to have something from this W minus to cancel it, to keep it finite, okay? so. What, what turns out that happens in this arrangement is that so far the solution where we can use to create this multi-bubble thing is that we need to take the cinch solution here. And, 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 and what happens when I take the cinch solution is that uh, uh, in, order, in order to cancel the would-be singular thing here, I would use the exponential, the e to the i x term from the cinch to cancel it here. But in order to, let's say, make two bubbles with opposite signs, then it would pick out the e to the minus x term in order to cancel it. And then immediately what happens is that at some point, this w minus flips sign, right? And it flips sign in a way that we cannot immediately remove. So we cannot immediately put bubbles of different magnetic fields to add up the magnetic field to zero. And we really think in order to ultimately do that, to add to, to put in different magnetic field to add it to zero, we either have to spin the system in a, in, a, in a nice way, or we have to completely resolve these smaller bubbles, or, or we have to grow these smaller bubbles, which we know that because of the orientation, we can pick different signs. So this is, this is the, I think, the most interesting question that we want to address in this context here. Thank you. That's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Andrea, you've been had your hand up. Yes, um, I, I was wondering about the Ibu and the last slide. I think you made a comment about classical stability. 
Ah, good. Yes. And I was wondering, I mean, there was this nice paper by Apron, Real and Santos, uh, when you couple it to asymptotical flat space, that even supersymmetric solutions are unstable. And I was wondering what you mean here by classical stability is okay. Good. So meaning if I just take the equation and I just do a linear fluctuations of the equations, that's, 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 sta that's stable. So it's perturbatively stable. Quantum mechanically, there could be instabilities, which we haven't addressed yet. yet. So you don't have an evanescent ergo region that where no, we don't have that gets trapped. Okay. Any? Did you want to follow up, Andrew? Your hand's still up. I don't know whether there's more. Okay. Any other questions? Can I follow up on that? Yeah. Go. Uh, for the for the stability uh, in one of the in uh, in your answers, one of the possible solutions is a static bubble of nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, ages ago, there was a paper uh, by Witten, I think, where he yeah. shows that uh, that bubble of nothing, uh, basically just uh, the hole in the middle that you cut out, out of your manifold, basically just expands and takes over all Good. your space time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's the quantum that instability your... of your system. So, to, oh, so, okay. that, yeah. so that stability is not, if, if, you know, so that stability, you can even take it more basic. If you just take the Kaluza Klein vacuum, where you pick, where you pick the spin structure, where the spinner is, is, is for example, antiperiodic along the circle, that's, that's, that's the same stability that Witten was describing. That's a, that's a quantum instability of, of, of your system. It's an instability where you can nucleate a bubble and this bubble can grow. So in our setup here, the reason what gives us a bit of hope that we might be able to avoid that, we haven't checked it. Well, we're checking it. We're checking it now. We, we don't have a complete answer, so I don't want to say anything. The reason that, that, that tells us here, that quantum instability is a, is a function of your asymptotic data, right? So our asymptotic data is not a vacuum. Our asymptotic data is that of a massive field with a specific charge. So, 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 so with that asymptotic data, we want to more carefully sort of study that instability and see what we can get. We, we haven't finished those computations. And when we do, we will certainly share them with, with, with people. Okay, Maybe I can make you. a quick comment on that. Uh, uh, what the bubble of nothing does is that that bubble then grows outwards. Yeah. And so I think what we're because RB grows, but in his case, RB is tagged to, a, to an asymptotic charge and yes. therefore it's locked in place by the asymptotics, which of course means that if you make something which has zero net charge, there could be some serious instabilities along exactly right. those lines. That's, that's, that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely okay, correct. Well, coming up, but, but, a couple but more you minutes. might have, but, you, but, but, but even if you have zero net charge, you can have multiple charges, which could still help you, but I don't know how. If there are, I've got one comment, but if there are other questions, let me give them precedence. Okay, so just a quick comment. I, you know, when I was when I first read the paper and when I first looked at and I listened to your talk, I was wondering how this relates to something Joseph and I and so forth did some time ago about the running bolt solution, and mm -hmm. I think I understand it now. And and it's it's quite it's quite, it's quite nice. I think what's going on. Um, so the running bolt solution we used minimal. We used we, we can you can put it in minimal supergravity. And there's a Chern Simons term. Ibu doesn't have a Chern Simons term. Yeah, but. The point is that you, in supergravity, you can, uh, how to put it, if you have a chern simons term, technically it requires three Maxwell fields to do it. But what usually happens is you set all three equal. That's called minimal supergravity, and you still have a chern simons term. But there's nothing to stop you killing off two of those Maxwell fields and leaving you with one left. The chern simons term then goes away. So if you think in terms of three Maxwell fields, the running bolt solutions have all three of them turned on in non-trivial ways with three charges. Ibu's solution really in some sense only has one of those Maxwell fields turned on. But another way you could think of it is you can think of it in the sense of if you, you could imagine starting in his bubbling process, you might actually have to use that churn simons term. And so his sim supersymmetry breaking mechanism is to take one of those Maxwell fields and make it much bigger than the other two. And, and, and in particular, the most trivial cases, you make the other two zero and only use one of them. But if you, you can go outside the supersymmetric regime rather nicely by breaking supersymmetry by somehow distorting, favoring one Maxwell field and its charge over the others, that's the supersymmetry breaking mechanism. And there's nothing to stop you bringing a little bit of supersymmetry back to stabilize his bubbles he's trying to blow in the, the slide that you see. It, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's sorry, very I, likely because, because what we see 
for those smaller bubbles, they, they locally they're super symmetric. Yep. And so, so that, that might be a little super, but the big fat bubble is, is full of a U1 that's out of proportion to all the rest. And that's what's right. breaking the supersymmetry. Right. I, think that's, I think that's a nice way to think about it. And that's how the moduli space of these solutions connects onto the moduli space of things in the running bolt. That, that we have three Maxwell fields on the go, which are non-trivially tuned to each other to keep the supersymmetry. Whereas here you've blown out one Maxwell field and left the other ones in the dust. But there's no supersymmetry in running bolt anyway. Because the base oh, thing... indeed, 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 but sorry, almost VPS. So, so it's, you know, indeed, you're absolutely right. But locally, there is some supersymmetry because you can zoom in on the bolt. So I think that this is like a running bolt with only one flux. Exactly. It's, got, it's one Maxwell field. Oh. So I think that's what's going on. It's, it's very like the running bolt story, except there's no Chan Simons. And, he's, and you can think of it as living inside. Uh, 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 super gravity or living inside string theory by saying really there are three Maxwell fields but he's chosen to set two of them to zero. Actually, mm -hmm. I think it's it's one it's one uh, it's two Maxwell fields. Oh, okay. Two, Why two Maxwell fields, Pierre? Because, I mean, like if Ibu comes back to the type to be embedding, we mm -hmm. see that actually the magnetic field comes from two Maxwell fields. It's like a D six D two D two. Oh, yeah, good. Two A. So it's just like two are equal, but it's mm -hmm. two Maxwell fields. Okay. But it, I mean, I, it's just a game, and the Chan Simons vanish if you kill one. So. Exactly. Indeed. So, so, so that was my what I took. Indeed, yeah. If we if we add back a, th a, four, a fourth charge, because here it's a three charge guy, mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm pretty sure indeed you need to take count the um, the Chan Simons of your. Uh, I mean, yeah. add Chan Simons in the game to play with. In the super gravity, uh, in the type to be super gravity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I rather suspect to blow out those bubbles at the north and south pole, you're going to need that churn time. So yeah, I'm not certain of that. But, but, it's, it's, it, but now I understand the connection between what went yeah. you know, back in the running bolt days to this. It's, it's really a different sort of part of the whole scheme where you've chosen to minimize or remove one of the Maxwell fields. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, your statement is simply saying that in the type 2B, I might need to turn on F3. But then if I do, I have a BNK identity that I have to be careful with. Yeah, and, 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 but it's also, you know, when you turn on that third Maxwell field, it's going to start uh, sourcing electric charges on those bubbles and doing all sorts of other cool things. But it, yeah. it's really nice. Um, we've now run into um, the sort of break time, but if there are any quick questions, we can field them. Otherwise, we'll take a slightly less than half hour break. break. I've been doing the break. I can still ask them after the yeah, break. Yeah, so we'll just shut the video off and let people talk and, and engage. But I'm going to go walk around for a little bit. and. So it will be unmoderated. Um, 